Hi, comrades. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Bones and All, the book and the movie, and comparing and contrasting. And I'm going to be talking about why the movie was so much better than the book. A couple of months ago, or actually, I don't really know when the movie came out, but a couple of months before the movie came out, Bones and All, um, I saw the trailer in the movie theaters, and I saw that it was based on the book. So I was like, oh my goodness, how amazing. Let me read the book first and then watch the movie. And it's going to be great. And I was so excited for the movie to come out because I got the book prior to the movie coming out. Um, but here's the thing. This book is so painfully kind of about nothing, sort of. I'll get into it later. That it took me a really long time to finish it. So now here we are, months after the movie came out. And I am just now talking about the book that I finished just a couple of days ago. The story is about this girl named Marin. She eats people, but it's kind of strange because she eats people whole and she's not a supernatural being, but she still eats people whole, which doesn't really make any sense. Anyways, so she eats people. She goes on the strip because her mom abandons her on her 16th birthday or a little shortly after her 16th birthday, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, abandons her and she's on the trip to find her biological father. During this trip, she meets hella people that are just like her, aka cannibals. Which makes you think, is this universe, the universe in the book, like how many cannibals? For some reason, in the movie, Marin and Sully could smell like other cannibals which is kind of weird because i swear in the book there was nothing like that and look i even like like while i was watching the movie i was trying to find if i missed it somehow maybe they talked about it once and i'm pretty sure it's nowhere to be found in the book also on the book cover you see that that's a little braid made out of hair you know whose hair that is victims of sally's um, in the book, Sully, I'm pretty sure it was Sully, it was like a grandpa, he ends up being her grandfather. In the movie, I'm not sure if he was her grandfather, because I did kind of skip through the ending a little bit of the movie, because it was a little bit cheesy. Um, but yeah, in the in the book, he was her, her grandfather. Then like, there's this whole thing that I talked about earlier, that Marin eats people. Like, even on the back of the book, it says... Marin doesn't just break hearts, she devours them. Love may come in many shapes and sizes, but for Marin it always ends the same, with her hiding the evidence and her mother packing up the car. But how does she devour them? Do you know what I'm saying? Because the movie, I'm so glad the movie didn't do this. In the movie, when Marin or whoever else would eat people, there would obviously be like body bits left afterwards. But in the book she literally eats them whole that's why it's called bones and all because she would literally eat people whole and then i googled it a human body is well over eighty thousand calories so can you tell me how a 16 year old girl can eat eighty thousand calories in one sitting and not just a 16 year old girl because the book opens with her being like three or something and eating a babysitter like she ate her babysitter so how the heck did she eat them and i'm really upset that the author didn't really dive deeper into what kind of being she is because i mean clearly she's not just a regular human anyways so on her trip she meets this guy his name is lee he's also a cannibal an eater i don't know i don't i don't know i don't remember what they call themselves i'm pretty sure it was like an eater or something they go on this trip they fall in love they keep eating people in the movie marion doesn't really want to be an eater but lee doesn't really care also the movie does this weird like flip-flop gender thing that a lot of like uh, book adaptations do is instead of her mom abandoning her after her 16th birthday and her looking for her dad like in the book in the movie it's her dad that stays with her a little bit and then abandons her after her 18th birthday and then she's out there looking for her mom um she finds her mom by the way and her mom is in a mental institution with no arms because spoiler alert turns out this thing is hereditary somehow and her mom ate her arms yeah so this book and the movie both they kind of like leave a lot of things unanswered sort of because so in the movie in the very end 
Lee gets stabbed by Sully in a fight because Sully wants to eat Marin and Lee. Or he wants to eat Marin. Or whatever. Anyways, he gets stabbed. It doesn't really matter. And as he's dying, he convinces Marin to eat him. And she does. He's like, you love me, so you will eat me. And she's like, yes. Um, but in the book, let me try to find this. In the book, Marin and Lee have a couple of drinks. They get a little bit tipsy kiss sort of i don't know um and she eats him because this is basically how the book works is the way that the author doesn't explain anything how Marin actually eats is like this is the ending of the chapter i felt my stomach rumble and then we flip the page and it's a new chapter and it says i woke up and lee was gone the bad taste was in my mouth there was no denying what i'd done you just ate him and the author decided not to explain us anything because she thought that would like that would not be interesting to the story at all um also when you finish the book you get to the surprising little acknowledgements this book is about cannibals right when people who know i'm vegan hear i've written a novel about cannibals this is this book it's supposed to be like a spin on veganism somehow and even after reading the acknowledgement I still don't really understand it because we as people that are not vegan we don't eat other people like in the mo- like we're not cannibals because we're not eating the same species we eat like chicken beef pork whatever but she kind of draw she kind of compares like I don't even understand what the author was trying to say with this book because it's almost like you can sense that there's an underlying message something in there and then you read the acknowledgement and you're like oh okay it's about veganism and then you think about a little more and it still doesn't come to you and that is what's confusing the book was kind of like a meh like i would honestly rate it like a three out of ten i was mostly excited for the fact that Marin eats people but when i found out after finishing the book that there was literally no like this book isn't even like horror basically at all it's more of like a drama piece i don't even know um but yeah the book was probably like a three out of ten the movie like a seven it's definitely more graphic and i like how the movie added its own little twists and its own little spins on the story but it still didn't really do much for me i also hated how it's supposed to be like romance but then she eats him out of love but then in the middle of the movie she's like i don't want to do this anymore but then she still does it and then in the book and the movie there's this thing where they're listening to a pastor on the radio and he talks about sinning and then forgiveness and i think and i kind of like i'm mad at the author for not going deeper into how Marin thinks that her actions are forgivable basically or at first she thinks it's unforgivable because she or at first she hears it's unforgivable because, you know, she eats people, but then she hears the pastor talk about forgiveness, so she, like, flip-flops. Like, I I don't know why the author didn't really talk about it. But overall, I mean, I don't know. The movie is pretty. It had cool music. Nick didn't really like it. He thought it was kind of dumb. If you like Bones and All, or if you've seen the movie, or if you're a fan of Timothy Chalamet and you checked out my video, I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, I hope you give it a like. And I'll see you my next one. I've been trying to post once a week, but it's not really going that well. Um, So like every seven to eight days is my new schedule. Um, Thank you so much for watching. I'm like rambling now. Goodbye.